mortgages, can you still get one? Is your pre-approval still valid since the onset of COVID-19? That's a topic I'm going to be asking Quentin Hardy, a mortgage banker with Movement Mortgage. Stay tuned to my next video. <laughs>
today, like I think we mentioned the other day, is that one bank might ask for a, um, a certain credit score and they might approve you, but then when you go to the closing, it could be a whole new world. Is that correct? We're seeing that less and less, but I think some of them were caught off guard. So for example, United Wholesale Mortgage, who's one of the biggest lenders in the country, it's a name you probably don't know because they work with the brokers, but what ended up happening is a lot of the brokers who are using them, there was, um, they changed their guidelines one night and people who came to their closings the very next morning who didn't get a phone call, hey, you no longer qualify, we need to requalify you. You need a higher credit score, or more down payment or change your debt to income ratio. So there, there was some struggle with that and they weren't the only ones, I'm not picking on them. Right. But, that's, that's getting to be rarer and rarer. For example, as we just mentioned, Chase, they made this notification over the weekend, which gave people time to react. For the most part, what we're seeing is that if you are locked in on an interest rate, locked in and approved and committed and ready to close, most banks are honoring that. We do see that some banks are not, however. So it's a case-by-case -case basis. And what is the... Um uh, about a month ago, right before COVID-19 uh, really took effect, the mortgage rates were the lowest they ever were. Uh, I already gave the date out, so this is date specific. Um, what are the average mortgage rates? Are they still very low and still very enticing for people? Yeah, we, saw, we saw the lowest rates in the history of the United States early in March, and then in about a week's time, they went up almost a full percent and then they started to creep back down. So right now we're back near, not at the very all time lows. So even if we're at the second lowest or third lowest in all of history, rates are really, really good. If you're looking to purchase or refinance, don't be distracted by COVID. If you have a situation where your, your economics allow it, your income is still there, great time to refinance, great time to buy a home. Okay, I have uh, two questions. The last question, is going to be tips that you're going to share with everybody on what they can be doing now if they know, like the example, the um, the question I asked about a viewer, she is unable to buy right now. A mortgage person told her that. So tips that she or anybody that's considering or what is was considering entering the spring market, what they can do now so when the actual pause is over, they're ready to rock and roll and get into the market right away. We'll save that one for last. But I've been getting emails and everybody's been hearing, anybody who's checking out real estate, the word forbearance. I know you've done the little videos and everything and you get a cringe in your face and I just got another email from somebody else in the mortgage industry. And can you enlighten everybody? I mean, I get phone calls. Can I stop paying my mortgage? Should I stop paying my mortgage? your um, advice about the actual forbearance that the government is nice enough to be offering everybody. And I'll say uh, that with a uh, grain of salt. <laughs> the government, well, that's, that's even one of the misnomers. The government's not really offering it. Okay. They're, they're, they are giving some laws, but it's offered by your lender. Okay. Which means that there's no universal answer. Right. Some lenders are offering to put those two or three or four payments at the end. Some are not. So that's the thing is I know I heard on the news, hey, you don't have to pay your mortgage for the next three months. Uh, the government has mandated that you know, they're gonna put it on the end. That's, that's not what was mandated. And your, your lender may do it, may not do it, might be three months, might be six months. There is no requirement per se. And I think that was one of the challenges is that they're not asking people to prove hardship. So if you just don't feel like paying it, you don't have to. But is that really a good thing? Um, there's no free lunch it, my, is my philosophy. Nothing is free. Somebody's paying for it somewhere, somehow. If you have a $3,000 a month mortgage, let's say, and you don't pay for three months, that $9,000, if they tack it onto your, at the end of your mortgage, you're now paying interest on the interest. And that $10,000 or $9,000 that you didn't pay is going to cost you way more over the life of your loan. So it's not free. It's actually more expensive. That's one. Two is... Some of the lenders, if you are in forbearance, they are going to report that as your part of your credit history. So now, six months from now, two years from now, you go to buy a house or refinance, and the underwriter says, oh, I, I, I note here on your credit report, you didn't pay your mortgage as was agreed. And they go, oh, well, the government said I didn't have to. You still didn't do it. That makes you a different level of risk. So there are underwriters who may view that, and, and that's what I, I keep asking people. So when you, before you do it, 
if you really can't pay, yeah, take advantage of it. I get it. But find out what are the ramifications on the other end of this. It's, it, forbearance is not a free ride. Forbearance is not, um, defer, it's not necessarily the same as deferment. And forbearance doesn't mean you don't pay. So find out what are the consequences of the actions. And, and you know, don't call your realtor and ask that. Call, call the bank. So if people are calling Mark Schreier, hey, you're a smart guy who knows a lot of stuff about a lot of things. But do you know what their lender is going to report on that credit report for that particular person? And it may not even be universal. You may call bank ABC and you and I get different answers because of the back end investor who holds our loan or the kind of loan we have or when we got it. Find out your specifics and particulars on the consequences of those actions. And my advice would be not only call your lender, but call your attorney and your accountant and get all these professionals involved and always get whatever the bank is going to give you in writing because what they tell you today come two years from now when everything's changing and everybody's got money and they're paying and they're going to slap you with a large sum you know debt or your credit is now messed up and now you have to go through the hassle of correcting your credit and we all know that that can be a major hassle at your expense and you might not be able to pull any loans from anywhere else in that time period if you have a big um, slap on your credit score. Uh, yeah. So that's something to consider, uh, great Absolutely. advice. And now the last thing, the last question that I mentioned is what can you know, Mr. Buyer or Mrs. Buyer on the fence who um, you know, is real upset now that they couldn't enter the market because they had everything set, but they're maybe they're, they're unemployed now or their credit score um, is not where it should be. Any advice? Should they be reaching out to their mortgage people? Um, I know, I've been telling people, and I have other videos as well, on how to set yourself up on the real estate side that you could actually shop now virtually. Everything can, is online. We could, realtors that have the technology can sell a house uh, sight unseen, like some people do who are transferring from out of state or out of the country in corporate America, just through the use of, uh, you know, digital um, marketing and e-signatures and things of that nature. Can they, let's start with, if I want to buy a house now and I need to get a mortgage and I have all the requirements met, um, credit score and down payment wise, can Quentin Hardy of Movement Mortgage, and we'll speak Movement Mortgage because we have you, can you do the documents virtually or digitally and be uh, acceptable to your bank? Sure. Uh, probably 80% of my clients I don't meet face-to-face. -face. Maybe I meet them at the closing if I go. Um, but I had a closing today. I didn't go, <laughs> as you can imagine. Uh, I've had closings during COVID for purchases and refinances and different transactions, and I'm not showing up. So some of these folks I don't get to meet. But in this day and age, you can virtually, you can do everything uh, for your mortgage pretty much in between the telephone and email and, and even old school fax and right. electronically it can be done. Great. And some tips that you can share, what should people be doing uh, to help them prepare uh, to get back in the market as soon as this pause is, is done? Well, one thing like that lady you mentioned who her lender said she was not qualified is she should find out what it is that's, that's stopping her from being qualified and maybe check with another source. And again, not to pick on Chase, but if you call Chase today and you've got a 699 credit score, they're going to tell you you're no longer qualified to buy a home. What they won't necessarily explain is you're no longer qualified to buy a home with us. doesn't mean you can't get a loan elsewhere. Great tip. If you've only got 5% down, they're going to tell you the same thing. You might be very well qualified elsewhere. So that's the first thing is to find out why you're not qualified and is that something that can be overcome at another lender. Two, if it can't, work on whatever that is. If it's that you don't have any money for a down payment, start saving money. If your credit is imperfect, start working on your credit. Whatever that item is, use this downtime to get ready and get in position. But that might require speaking with a lender or lenders to figure out what action to take for your specific situation. Great. And in closing, I'd just like to say that uh, Quentin was mentioning the mortgage side of it. Same thing in real estate, same thing in buying houses. Use this time to do your research, to educate yourself, watch uh, YouTube videos like this one, and get yourself ready for the pause to be, or the uh, lockdown, or lock-in, whatever you want to call it, to be lifted, because 
unlike the 08 um, real estate dive, this is not a real estate dive. The real estate market was doing really well, particularly here on Long Island. And it's, it's like everybody's, you know, if you ever follow horse racing, they're at the gate and they're waiting for the starting bell to jump back into the market. With that being said, I'd like to thank Quentin of Movement Mortgage. He's going to have his contact info I'm going to share with you down below in the comments. And um, thanks again. Yeah.